I'm back. Yes, guys, welcome back to another episode, or episode three of Transfer Weekly. So, let's get this started. Let's start off with the, the main news. So, at the time of recording, it seems like Eze has actually signed for Crystal Palace. This is crazy. We've actually signed someone over, like, over £5 million. Seems really brilliant player. Looking at his um, highlights on YouTube, he seems to elegantly glide through players. Um, I've watched a video which uh, James Aldcott has released. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can watch it. He's a QPR fan. He was saying, he was saying why Eze is good, uh, what he can bring to our team, what he brought to QPR. Um, and basically just saying that he's a really good player and he'll work really well in the Premier League. So the actual deal is a £15 million deal with £4.5 million as add-ons, but I believe that those are to be appearance-based, so I'm pretty sure that we're going to have to activate that £4.5 million in add-ons. This will be a, a four-year contract with a one-year extension if we'd like to, with £50,000 a week plus bonuses. I think this is a brilliant deal. Really, I really do. I think we're getting a proper young British talent. Got called up to the England under-21 squad again this year. Looks like a proper talent. So much skill. So much swagger when he's on the ball. Looks like a proper signing for Palace. Um, late on, West Brom came in with a £20 million deal. However, as they turned it down because he wants to come to the mighty Palace. Brilliant signing overall. There's not much more I can say about it. Hopefully he's having a medical in the next couple of days and it will be finalised by the club and he'll have an announcement video. Stop. I know this doesn't involve Palace, but I don't think this is ever going to happen again. Messi has handed in a transfer request to Barcelona. Mental business, if I'm honest. I'm not going to cover it much, but it looks like Man City are the people that are in favour of buying him if he is allowed to leave for a free. Messi's most likely going to take them to court to activate this part in his contract where he can leave for free. But I think this will be brilliant seeing Messi in the Premier League. But it's going to be awful if we can't see him in the Premier League because we're still at home watching on TV. Um, back to Palace. I've heard or seen nothing else on Wilfred Zaha. I've seen no movement. Um, when he was taking pictures in media day, he didn't seem like he wanted to go. He seemed pretty happy doing it to me. Um... I think if he stays, it'll be brilliant, as everyone else would think it would be, because as it looks like, we're going to have a really good front line this year, and with Zaha in that front line as well, we might score more goals than we originally thought. Um, Solov, I've heard from sources, not um, very reliable ones, we'll say, but Palace have agreed a 17 million offer from RB Leipzig for Solov. Um, all Solov has to do to confirm this sale for us is force his way back to us. However, Solov would like to see out his whole loan and win the title at Transport. Not sure if this is the right move for him because he could have a bad season and then his price tag would plummet again. But 17 million, I think we should try and convince Solov that a Turkish league title is nothing compared to playing in the top flight of German football for a good, good, good team. Um, final transfer um, news is Monaco, Palace and Fulham are all in for Emil Smith-Rowe, Arsenal attacking midfielder slash winger. Looks like a brilliant player. I haven't, I've only heard from Arsenal fans and some friends about how good he is. They're saying he's really good in the youth setup. Um, but nothing special. But I see us already buying Eze. There's no reason to get another attacking midfielder. It's good that he's a winger because he can flex into those positions. But I think that he'll be a good squad player, one for the future. And if we pick him up at a low, low price, I think that's perfect for Palace. Finally, on to the friendly match, which was played yesterday. Palace 2, Oxford 1. Uh, first of all, the kit is actually pretty decent. I'm wearing my favourite kit for the last couple of years right now. This is my lucky shirt. Um, yeah, because as I was wearing this shirt, we beat Liverpool, beat Tottenham, nearly beat United. We had really good uh, games with this shirt on. 
and beat Chelsea. That was probably my favourite away day I've ever been to. That was amazing. Um, yeah, our kit actually looks pretty decent. Looking at other people's kits, how they're really rubbish. And Bristol City's goalkeeper kit is horrendous. Oh, it's disgusting. Um, if I can, I'll put a picture right here. Um, but yeah, so first half, we were awful. No defence. Oxford just had a couple good one-twos and they were in. They scored. Um, Henderson is quite a rubbish goalkeeper, if I'm honest. He fumbled a couple balls which just came straight at him. Nearly gave away the win at the end. Um, but yeah, the first half, pretty crap. He was playing Schlup in a free roll, which was new. Um, maybe, I've seen this on Twitter, that maybe he's trialling this for a certain someone to come in. More like Eze, seeing if it works. But I feel like it did, because the formation was set up in a defending 4-4-2. And the free roll was in the forward, the second forward position next to Ayu. And then when we was attacking, we, went, we switched to a 4-2-4. I felt this was really nice because we had four forwards and two, yeah, two, two narrow forwards and two wide forwards and that um, free roll either came in as a number 10 or pushed on as a through run, so a run in behind. Um, so McCarthy got sent off because he was injured, Max came on but when Max came on, when he was attacking he went from midfield into a left forward or a right forward position. I know he's wide, but I still think it's a good move to have this variation of 4-2-4 to 4-4-2 because it will be really easy for the, the wider players to just drop back into their blocks again. Um, well, once we could defend, the match was alright and we scored two goals in ten minutes. It's a League One tied, you can't really take much from it. The rest of our friendlies aren't really against that big clubs, so we can't really see what real places we need to improve on but i think that the millwall match in a couple of weeks will be the match where we need to analyze every single part of that match and then fully see what we need to do the only thing i'm a bit disappointed about is i don't see any strikers that we're linked with at the moment we're linked with some french guy but he's scored like three goals in 17 matches but that's barely better than benteke this season so i think we need to go in hard and get someone who's proven like Ollie Watkins but I feel like there's too many people in for Watkins but we need to be a bit more creative maybe try and get um, Gabriel Martinelli on loan for a season or something along them lines anyway thanks for watching um, you'll see all my social medias and stuff in the outro and yeah cool in a bit see you next week